the mighty, mighty, mighty Angel Snub Nub 7. And I just want to be a little casual with us on these few videos I've, I've been making lately. Just want to talk with us for about 13 or less minutes. And uh, this particular conversation we want to speak on is it's sex oriented. For many of you, as soon as I say sex, your eyes light up, and boy, we have become sexual perverts, unnatural beings in the sexual arena because we have been exploited and made breeders, and we are slaves, and in a slave's life, since you have no pleasure in your life, then you find pleasure in your body. When you are a slave, you have to find pleasure outside of yourself. So either your pleasure is coming from your body, or you drink alcohol, or you smoke some type of drug. You have to do something because your life is so miserable as a slave, you've been disconnected from your very being and your umbilical cord is no longer to the universe. You, your biblical cord, your being as a slave is now connected to a slave master. And it is sad in 2012 that your being, your reason for living is to continue to serve Caucasian people. And you and I, for the sake of your children, if not for yourself, we should want to destroy this umbilical cord connected to these people that destroyed our ancestors, that made you a sexual deviant. I want to talk about sex. Beginning with the brothers. This is very short because we know this. It is usually very easy for a male to have an ejaculation during the intercourse process. Matter of fact, you don't have to place the penis in the vagina. There is something called masturbation. But the penis being sensitive, and if you move the penis, and the penis being sensitive, that triggers an action within that organ which causes the prostate gland to come together. And the seminal fluid, the sperm, is inside the prostate gland. I'm not sure I'm saying that very correctly, but I know that the the liquid and the sperm is, are two separate things, but when the process, when the prostate gland uh, crunches together, that's not the word I'm looking for, but right now that's all I can find. When it, when it comes together, when it squishes together, then it sends the seminal fluid and the sperm on its way. And it's very easy for a male to get what we call an orgasm. Very easy to do. But the penis was not made to orgasm all day long. Matter of fact, according to Brother uh, Lalo O Africa, in his book, African Holistic Health, I believe I forgot exactly how he said this, but it is best that you not orgasm maybe once a month, he says in his book. And for us who have been turned into sexual perverts, we can't comprehend, man, what are you talking about? I got to get my woman and we got to do it every day and every few minutes. And so 
because you are a sexual pervert, because you are outside of the natural order of things, soon the male experience erectile dysfunction. Pretty soon you be giving, you start having problems with your penis and your prostate. Do you think that it is it is shocking, unexpected that males are having prostate cancer? Because when your prostate is always used like that, it becomes weakened. It's a muscle. And when that muscle becomes weakened, then it becomes vulnerable to illness. From, from, from minor urinary problems, then you can get cancer. And I can guarantee you every man that has cancer, and you ask them how many times, how many times that you orgasm, they couldn't tell you it's, it's endless and now you've got cancer. That's, I'm telling you, that's the primary reason. The penis was not made to be an endless tool for trying to find pleasure. There is no animal in nature running around, man, I just got to screw, screw it every day and, and, ooh, and, and making porn films and, and masturbating. There, you don't see that in nature. We have been turned into sexual deviants. Sisters, do you know why you are having problems getting an orgasm? In your body, there's a organ, something like a prostate gland. But it's not a prostate gland. Do you know what an orgasm is? Do you know what it is biologically? Sisters, you should feel no shame about, I can't get an orgasm. It's not meant for you to be like that. When a woman gets an orgasm, the reason why, sister, you get an orgasm is because your vagina becomes dry. During the sexual copulation, and you're not healthy, then when your vagina becomes dry, your body responds with this little organ that's like a prostate gland to the male. It, it uh, responds by pressing together, uh, what's that word I'm looking for? I can't think of it. Anyway, it sends extra fluid, lubricating fluid to your vagina so that your vagina does not become dry. And since most healthy women, your vagina makes, makes sufficient uh, lubricant during the sexual copulation because sexual copulation should not last for hours and hours and things of this nature. Your body can handle the, that experience uh, for that certain period of time. But when you begin sexual perversion and deviancy and that's that's when this usually happens and so when many women experience this they want more cause to a sexual pervert oh man that feels so good all oh, this feels good but see that's good for a slave now if y'all are black conscious black power slaves then you keep going on. And then the woman in our sexual, sexual perversion, when we begin to have sexual problems, erectile dysfunction, sisters get all these kind of problems, then they have all these babies back to back. Don't give your body a chance to heal. You don't breastfeed. Our sisters are all messed up. And these old lustful ass men don't give a damn about our women. We all messed up. That's because we live in an unnatural society. We, as a people, we were breeders. And those who bred us did not care anything about our physical health. They did not care anything about our mental health. They wanted to make more slaves. They wanted, make, wanted us to make more people so they can make money. And you still do the same thing. So you go running around buying all these condoms 
and birth control pills and all this other madness and all these diapers and, and all this stuff in relation to your sexual behavior that you don't that you don't even benefit from. The massa, those who are in, con in control, still benefit from everything that you do. So how can you call anybody an Uncle Tom? How can we call anybody a Sambo when everything that we do benefits another man? A man that don't give a care about us. So until you get to the point where your sex, where your money, where your work benefits you, we really can't talk about nobody. We must get out of this mentality of being a sexual breeder. We must stop being a deviant. And out of our sexual deviancy, out of this sexual perversion, then comes homosexual behavior, comes pedophilia, bisexuality, transgenderism, all this other stuff because we have become unnatural beasts. And we should want to be better than that. But when this, when living in a zoo is all you know, how can you do better? So it is, it is up to us who claim that we have a greater, higher mentality to teach our people, you are not a rabbit. And the only reason rabbits breed the way they do is because they don't live long. They get, they have many, many predators. So they breed all these babies so that their species has a chance to survive. Are you like that? Maybe we are. Because in Chicago, how many of us are being murdered? In St. Louis, in New Orleans, in New York, every day black people are being murdered, die from cancer, all kinds of illnesses. Maybe we need to breed like this or otherwise we'll go into extinction. So maybe you can justify being a sexual pervert or porn addict. That's, that's another thing. We want to see naked ass 24 hours a day. What kind of human being are you? You're acting like a fruitcake. Some kind of Frankenstein. And that's what has happened to us. We've been turned into a sexual Frankenstein. Think about it. Jot down your comments. Be a human being and stop being some, somebody's breeding machine. This your brother Talik Ra. This was and is the reality's temple on earth. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Reality's Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course. I'm the host of this particular program known here on the internet as the mighty, 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 mm. angel snub number seven. I am your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I want to just spend these uh, few minutes to share with my audience because I am so filled with emotion and that emotion is anger because I see the anger that permeates from those who we call white people. I am angry at those who have dark skin like us, broad nose like us, thick lips like us. We call them Uncle Tom. We call them Sambo. And I just finished watching a video by a Sambo. There's no need to mention the name because really their influence is not what it used to be. So all we need to know is that <laughs> it was the video of a Sambo. And this Sambo was crying, oh, just tears, well, not physical tears, but you can hear this Sambo was just so filled with outrage 
over the injustice, of course, not of a black person. In fact, no person of color. The Sambo always gets upset when they're masa. They believe is being mistreated. And the Sambo says that some niggers, some black folks, they uh, did a tremendous evil to this poor white man. Oh, that makes Sambo's really upset. Don't hurt the Sambo's, the Uncle Tom's uh, masa for no reason. And then we have a certain section of Caucasian people, they sit around with their innocent face because I ain't never done nothing. That's the past. It's all over. Can we all just get along? Why are you black people so filled with hate? And the Sambo holds the hand of his masa and he stands with them or she stands with them the coon, the shine, the sambo, scratching where they don't, they don't itch. They stand right there with their masa and they tell me, Brother Talik, you know, why we just can't get along? Why is the black man and woman, why is the descendants of slaves born in America, why are y'all black folks so filled with hate? Well, let me see. Okay. Here we go. Could maybe lynching cause somebody to hate you? Uh, could rape? Uh, maybe could that uh, possible make somebody hate you? Could over 300 years of Physical slavery and over 100 years of Jim Crow, could that, whoa, could that uh, make you hate somebody? Could giving black people liquor and drugs, things of that nature, on purpose in our communities, uh, could that uh, possible? Would that make you hate somebody when, no, when that liquor and those drugs? do things to the people's mind that cause them to do crazy things to themselves? Hmm, I wonder. But you see, for me, see, I feel for people. I was watching some movie, it had something to do with the Holocaust. And the Holocaust, of course, is the story of Jewish oppression in Germany. I watched the story of how the American people drove the Native American people down the trail of tears and placed the Native American people on reservations. See, for me, I feel for people. I am, or what you would call an atheist, but I'm not an atheist. I'm a realist. And the difference is if you can show clear, convincing, and overwhelming evidence that God exists, I don't mind saying and accepting God. I did not say I would serve God, but I would know that God exists. So that's, I'm not an atheist. But I feel for people. When I hear a baby cry, it makes no difference to me whether that baby is a pink person or a brown person or a black person or I don't care anything about color. I'm concerned about the welfare of a child. It's simple as that. When I listen to a Jewish Holocaust survivor, I listen to the story of the Native American people driven down the trail of tears. I listen to the hurt and the pain of a woman being beaten by a abusive man or vice versa. When I listen to people, they just lost their job. 
Their mother just died. I feel for all hurt and all pain. Unlike you, you pick and choose. I'm only going to cry for the Caucasian people. I'm only going to cry for the black people. I cry for all people and I even feel for animals. I don't want to see rabbits mistreated. I don't want to see dogs mistreated. I don't want to see cats mistreated. I don't want to see roaches mistreated. Really, I don't. Just don't come in my house, Mr. Roach. <laughs> you know, stay outside where you belong. I don't like living things to be mistreated and harmed and killed for no reason. I don't want to be nobody's massa. I can drive my own car. I don't need a chauffeur. I don't need you to wash my dishes. I don't need you to shine my shoes. I like to do things for myself. I don't need a servant to make myself feel superior over somebody or better. But you have those who they feed off things like that. So if I can feel emotion for a Jewish person, if I can feel emotion for a dog or a cat, if I can feel emotion for Native American people or Mexicans or anybody that suffer type, any type of harm or suffer atrocity, how come I can't feel emotion for myself? How come I can't feel emotion for my great-great-grandmother that I never knew, that I've lost connection, but I know she exists? I might not know her. Every time I see a black man, a picture of a black man hanging from a tree, a black woman hanging from a tree, a black child given to alligators, use the black child for bait so they can catch alligators. I'm not supposed to feel nothing. Are you insane? Are you out your mind? So you look at somebody like me like I'm insane. Because your niggers ain't supposed to have feelings for themselves. Just like your sambos. Your sambo will cry for Caucasian children. Your sambo will cry for Jewish people. Your sambo will cry for everybody except his own self. And you don't think that your sambo, you don't think that your cool is mentally sick. If you're going to cry and you're going to be a just person, if you're going to be a fair person, if you're going to cry for everybody, then why don't you cry for yourself? But for some reason, the Sambo, the Kuhn, the Uncle Tom, they feel that it's wrong for them to say anything in behalf of their own people, people that look just like them. They're always trying to find fault in black folks, always trying to find some wrong in black people. They don't cry for the agony and don't care about the sister that was raped in the slave master's cabin. The little baby that was thrown to crocodiles and alligators used for bait. The sister whose womb was split open with a knife and that fetus was taken out of her womb and stuck into the ground on some racist plantation field. They don't feel nothing. Why is the black man and woman so filled with hate? You would feel hate too. And if I started talking about George Washington, I called George Washington a monkey. Call Patrick Henry some foul name. You would get greatly upset. So if you get upset over people that you never knew, you don't know Abraham Lincoln, you don't know George Washington, you don't know your forefathers, but they were racist. That they were. They were evil people. That's how they built this country. Through murder, through rape, through lies, deceit. But you still love them. So how come I have to be filled with hate? Because I have emotion and feel emotion for my great-great-grandfathers. Whether they were slaves or they were indentured servants or free men. Whether they came from Jamaica, some island or Africa, wherever they came from. They are who I am and they suffered. So how come I cannot feel emotion? And then you don't make it no better in 2012 
when the black man and woman in America, we still suffer housing discrimination. We are still discriminated in jobs. We are still, they are still trying to hinder us from voting. All those things that my ancestors suffered, I still have to go through. They locked me up because I was black for 10 years, not because of no mental illness. That was an excuse. And I prove that all day long. So don't come to me talking about why y'all so filled with hate. Anybody with any kind of sense will be filled with hate when you are mistreated. You are filled with hate. How many of y'all really love Adam Lanza, the little young white guy that just shot all those babies? Do you love him or do you hate him? Or do you pretend to be a good Christian? Oh, forgive and all that kind of good stuff. Well, while you forgive, which I doubt you'll do, then give me the right to feel for my people like you feel for your own. Jot down your comments. This is your brother, Taliki Mira. This was and is the reality's temple on earth. Peace forever and always. And I am your brother, the mighty Angel Snub Nub 7. And this is the reality's temple on earth. I'm going to be just a little casual, have a few minutes that I would like to, and I hope that you give me the honor uh, of my sharing this time with you. It is always wonderful and again an honor that you would allow me to speak with us just for a few minutes. I want to talk to us about this latest fiasco um, that happened within this great debate, probably one of the greatest debates that has happened on YouTube or outside of YouTube between our brothers Sarah Sutinsetti and Brother Polite. And I myself watched this debate and I always enjoy these young brothers that have so much information, so much to offer to this struggle that we call black power, this struggle that we call black nationalism, Afrocentricity, however you want to call it. All you brothers and sisters, man, if you only knew how powerful you really are. But your energy is always causing you to go backwards or you're, or you're stalled. And right now, you're stalled and going backwards. You're nowhere close to being like your ancestors. And that must stop. And the only way it's going to stop is that you begin to take the advice of your elders or those who you think hate on you, criticize you, when it is coming from a good place because we want you to grow. We don't want you to digress. I received a comment on one of my videos from a person that told me that they enjoyed what I have to say, but my words are becoming lame and my words are lame because it seems I'm always criticizing brothers and sisters for doing this or doing that. If the brothers and the sisters, if myself, if we are so smart, if everything you're doing, everything you're saying is so great, then answer me this question. Then you tell me why are you and I, why are we still slaves? Why are we and have not we gone further than our ancestors? It is because we are pompous. It is because we are arrogant. You think that you know it all. And if you know it all or if you knew it all, then why are you still the white man's? You know what I want to say. I'm trying to improve myself. I don't want to speak in a manner so my young brothers and sisters cannot listen to my words because the whole family 
needs to be taught. The whole family, including the little children, must be taught. They must know this information that we have to offer. But if you take the information, if you make it where it's good for an adult, but the children cannot drink it, then you are fighting against yourself when the whole family needs to be involved in this struggle. Some of you have tunnel vision. When some of y'all Negroes, when some of you hold on to something, when you believe in something, you become 1,000% dedicated. So you say 7 plus 8, I mean 7 plus 1 equals 8. And you hold on to that. Then another brother says 4 plus 4 is 8. And they hold on to that. Another brother, 0 plus 8 equals 8. Another brother says, well, 9 minus 1 equals 8. It all ends up, the answer is 8. It was just different ways of getting to the solution. But we can't see, we can't be flexible in that. So we're fighting among one another when we are supposed to be aiming and directing ourselves to one particular goal, one particular solution have one particular purpose. And so we find ourselves stalled. I am here to critique. Yes, I will critique because we need this type of help. I said we need this type of help. I think the brother or the sister, whoever sent me that comment, I thank them for their criticism because I don't want to go around being seen as somebody or I'm just criticizing people. No, I am trying to help us, give us advice so that we can develop and grow to higher levels. The fiasco, that which happened between Sarah Sutton City and Brother Polite during this great debate that we did enjoy, but there was an incident about the showing of pornography. I only have about six minutes left, so let me just say this quickly. Brother Polite, if you're listening to this video, you are wrong. Brother Sar Sutton Sandy, I want to say to you, you're wrong also. Both sides was wrong. And I'm going to say this in defense of the children. There are many things our children should not experience. They should not have to see pornographic images. Brother Polite, you knew that you was getting ready to debate Sarah Sutton Seti. Sarah Sutton Seti is known for four letter words. An MF this and I'm a nigga that and so forth. Since everybody knew and Sarah Sutton Seti was not asked to tone his words or the how he brings a message across, then why are you bringing your children to an event where you know there will be profanity and maybe even worse? Because I know I wouldn't do it. My children would stay home with their mothers or grandfather or grandmother. I would not bring. The, and then you know how Negroes are. We are known for hurting one another we won't jump on Caucasian people or anybody that will hurt us, but we're known for killing black people. I would not want to bring my children to an event where there's a possibility of hostility. They would not have been there. So, Brother Polite, you were an error to bring your children to this event. So your children can listen at the minimum all this profane language, vulgar talk. And if you are an intelligent person, why do y'all need to say Negro nigga this and kiss my mother this and it makes you sound illiterate and really stupid. But that's cool to you. 
Well, you keep staying cool. And then, Brother Seti, you mean to tell me, see, we don't have no love and respect for nobody. If you are in a public event like this, not only are you disrespecting when you use foul and profane language, this is not your event. This is an, an event that you know people from different dynamics, different forms of thought come. Christian brothers, Maybe there were some homosexual brothers and sisters. All kinds of people were attending this event. So since this is not your event, then out of respect, then we need to watch how we speak. Because we must speak the truth. But if I'm in, a, in an event where I have homosexual brothers and sisters, where I have Christian brothers and sisters, then I must speak in a way because I don't want to Disrespect my family because even though that person is a Christian, that person is a Muslim, we don't want to disrespect one another. But we have these attitudes where we don't care. And above all, how can you disrespect and don't care about how we treat our children? So these poor babies, there are some things our babies shouldn't hear. There are some things our babies shouldn't see till they become of an age where they can process these things. And Brother Polite is correct. Now he has to turn around and explain to his babies about sodomy. And that's just, see, these things are just wrong. But we so powerful. Oh, I'm just telling the truth. It's not about you telling the truth. And you don't have to show images of sodomy in order to get your point across. There's no need for it. But see, when you don't have no respect for nobody, these things happen. So, Brother Polite, you are in error to bring your children to a place where this the possibility was high this could happen. And Brother Sarasun said he is in error because... He placed these images and did not care about these poor babies and what they were being, uh, these images being uh, portrayed before these babies who don't know any, they don't know and can't process these things. Am I wrong to say this? Because I know I wouldn't want my children who are 3, 10, 13 years old, babies. I would not want them to be exposed to this. They are not ready. In fact, you have adults you should not have done this for. It is disrespectful. But see, when we are arrogant, when we have poor character, these things happen. How can you be a leader? Nobody in their right mind is going to follow you. Because to be a you can follow, you can do this with your organization, but you're not going to lead a people because a people consists of many types of thought process. Seven plus one is eight. Four plus four is eight. Eight plus zero is eight. Nine minus one is eight. You have different types of people that you have to work with. But when you're selfish, you can't see it. And it is, your, it is our being selfish that is stopping us from moving this movement ahead. Do you understand that? We have to respect and stop being selfish. Let's talk about it, jot down your comments. It has nothing to do with hating one another. We're going we try to learn so that we can win against this beast. Thank you for listening. It's your brother Talik Ibn Ra. This was and is the Reality's Temple on Earth. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I'm the host of this particular program, known here on the internet as the Mighty, Mighty, Mighty. Mm. Angel Snub Nub 7, I am your brother, 
and hopefully your friend Tali even wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll, this this particular subject is sort of funny to me. It was on my mind, and I just decided, why not make a video? Cause I like making video. Lately, I've been a little dehydrated, feeling a little sick, but there were certain topics that I felt as though I needed to speak on and I was able to pull that off. I'm feeling feeling a little bit better. So let me just let me my, my time is running out. Let me get straight to the 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 the, the meat of the subject. Now I'm now I'm tongue tied because when you make your videos you have to have a little a certain role going. And once you get out of that that particular role it messes you all up. Okay. Now, I was thinking about that television show. It was called Kids Say the Funniest Things or Kids Say the Darnest Things or something to that effect. I'm paraphrasing. I, I, I really don't know exactly how that's titled because I never really watched the show. But it made me to also relate that to Caucasian people because they also can say the funniest and the darnest things. I wonder sometimes when racist Caucasian people, racist pink people, I wonder do they really take the time to think about their insults before they insult? Prime example. Let, let me give you this as an example. Now, you are swimming. I am a lifeguard. Okay? I'm a, I'm a lifeguard, and my duty is to save you from drowning if you get in trouble swimming. So you're swimming, and you start to drown. Now, I don't help you until you get in trouble. Until I see that you are, your activity, something is wrong. Sometimes people scream for help. So I go out into the water and I bring you back to shore, give you CPR. I just save you. If your purse just gets snatched and somebody's trying to stab you and I grab the knife and hold the perpetrator of the crime for the police, I just save you from being a victim of a crime. If you are caught in your house and I run inside that house and get you, take your body so that you will not get burned by the fire, I saved you. A savior is needed or you become saved when you are in trouble, when there is something that is harmful and you try to bring peace, you try to take that person out of harm's way. Now, what happens when you are swimming, and I save you, bring you to shore, give you CPR or whatever. Then I stop you. Then I slap you. Then I take my knife out of my pocket and stab you. You go to the hospital and get well. I go to the hospital, and you're angry and mad. And then I turn around and tell you, well, you was drowning. I saved you. <laughs> I mean, look at this. The person got stab marks. You don't punch them all in the face. Yeah, you, you're supposed to say, what kind of savior are you? All that to say with this corny example. <laughs> 
the racist pink people of America, they say they saved the African people. I don't know what they saved the African people from, but they saved you, they saved our ancestors, they saved us to bring us from the water where we were drowning. We did not ask for your help. You took us out of the water, you claimed we was drowning, and then once you got on got us on shore. In this case, you did not give us CPR. You began to stab us with a knife. You began to rape us. You began to lynch us. You began to do all these atrocities to us. So explain to me because children said the darnest things. How are you and how did you save me? It seems as though you've done more harm than you did good. When you save a person, you give them CPR and you call an ambulance, you send them to the hospital and you give them care. You do not lynch them, you do not rape them, you do not cause them more harm than the harm they was already facing. So if the African people were savages, if they were living this savage life or whatever, you brought them to America and you made the situation worse because instead of bringing them care, instead of bringing them love, you brought them hate, you brought them anger, and you brought them 400 years of enslavement even to this day. So you tell me, and if a person that you say, why are so many of these black people, why are they not grateful for what you've done to them? Even those who claim they like you, they will remind you of your evil. You saved me, but you choked me. You saved me, but you stabbed me. Explain what kind of what kind of saviors are you? We saved you when you was in Africa. How were we drowning? What did we do or what were we doing to make you think we needed your help? And then after you hurt us, after you caused us harm, when we reach out and ask you, could you help us relieve ourselves of the harm that you caused? You become all upset. You did it yourself. Accept responsibility and make proper choices. A person who is drowning, you said that we are, that you saved us. A person who needs help like that is unable to make proper choices and accept responsibility. You don't ask somebody that stupid question if they are in a fire or they're drowning. They are beyond the ability, capability to save themselves. So you say that you went to Africa and you saved these poor heathens. But if you notice the so-called savage society, you don't see people in a savage society running around killing little children with their spears. But in America, your civilized society, one, a young man can obtain a weapon and shoot over 20 little children, babies. But in, you don't hear about things like that. In the savage society, there is, there is no homelessness. There is no, you don't hear people talking about, you don't see domestic violence. You don't see the gender war. I hate the man, I hate the woman. You don't see that in the savage society. You don't see homosexuality in the savage society. 
You don't see all these plagues in civilized society. You don't see that among savages, but you go all the way across the water to save them. Explain that to me. Y'all said the most funniest. Y'all said the most darnest things. And you get away with it because the people of whom you're talking to, they don't think for themselves. How are you saving me at the same time you're taking a billy club and you're busting me upside my head? How are you saving me? I'm 17 years old. I can't walk down the street and I get shot down like a dog and then somebody claim self-defense. I had no weapon. Then you call me a thug. I'm unarmed with a bag of Skittles and a tea in my hand. But now over 20 little babies are shot down in the street. Somebody's life has more value than another. A murderer in one case gets paid while another murder gets vilified, but he is not called a savage animal. Oh, there's something, oh, something wrong in his life or whatever. They make excuses for evil. Y'all say and do the funniest and darnest thing. I don't get it. But one thing for sure, please don't come around this house with that foolishness. The Negroes that love you, pink person, the Negroes that want to be part of your society and all, go ahead, keep saving them. I would rather drown. Don't save me. Because your kind of saving keeps a person in the hospital. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Just wanted to throw a little something out there. This is your, your brother, Talik Ibn Ra. Jot down your comments. This was and is the Reality's Temple on earth.